All right guys, so for this part of my garage makeup series, I'm gonna be doing a little bit of paint work in the back here. Obviously what you're seeing right now is already a completed portion, which is three coats of white paint onto this wall behind me. But I just wanna preface this episode by saying this is my first time actually painting on a wall and I've never done it before. So don't watch this as a how-to, but maybe more of a confidence booster if you're in the same situation as I am as an adult who should already had some experience painting an interior wall, but you never got to and you're kind of scared to do so, well, you can rest assured someone like me who don't have much skill set with my hands got the job done, but it wasn't without any hiccups. There was quite a bit of frustration that I went through, mostly because I was ill-prepared on getting things ready so it's easier for me to get things going, but I have documented everything and I'm gonna showcase that for everyone to watch and either learn from my mistakes or for you guys to provide some criticisms so I can learn for my next phase of painting, which is this wall here. So without further ado, let's get going. All right, so today I'm finally gonna paint the garage on this side here. You'll notice that there's a ton of clutter on this side, that's because I've been working on the gym, which looks freaking awesome, I would say considering that all of that were totes and shelving units. All this area was garbage that's filled by all this junk here. But now that I got a concept down of what I want and how to be laid out, like this isn't the finished product for the gym. Obviously I'm gonna paint, I'm gonna put a mirror up, it's gonna look pretty and all, but I just want to visualize what the layout was physically by putting things in and same with the floor mat. So I'm very happy with how the gym turned out. And then now it's to work on my bike side. And first thing I wanted to do was paint the walls. And the first coloring I put in is white, just to keep things neutral. And then maybe put like a pinstripe along the line because that's, that's what I think most cool looking garages do. But I don't know, that could be tacky. Let me know in the comments below if you think that's tacky or if you have any other suggestions just to make the garage space a little bit more professional looking. But with that said, I'm gonna be working on taking all this stuff away from the walls and then start preparing the wall to paint. As you can see, I already started doing some patchwork here and then I'll be doing the same thing on this side with all the picture frames and all that that I'm probably gonna take down and reorganize all that area. <laughs> So I'm gonna be using dry decks, which is supposed to patch up obviously a drywall that has holes in it. And there's some new holes that I didn't cover up. So it's just like a putty, you just put it in and then you flatten it out, just like that. It's actually quite therapeutic to do it. Just gotta make sure you gotta get it in the hole first. I know there's probably some tradesmen on my channel watching this and probably like, fuck, you're doing it wrong. Well, unfortunately, I didn't really have anyone teach me how to do all these stuff. But I'm learning now. Thank goodness for the age of YouTube, right? Learned how to do things right and wrong, but at least give yourself the confidence to do it. That's what this channel's all about. I could have probably used a smaller spatula here, wasting a lot of putty. I like to put a little extra on and then I can sand it down rather than trying to make it super flat and smooth right from the get-go. Okay, that's one hole. This look good. Oh, right here. There we go. I don't know, I really like doing this. Something about like flattening surfaces and making holes disappear is like really therapeutic. Obviously, I could be doing this way more efficiently with less putty if I was a professional, but mm, I don't know if I like that. There was a small hole up here. Not that it was needed, but why not? I think we're good. We'll let that dry out. And then my previous one, I'm sanding it down so it's like not a rough surface. And then we'll start getting to paint and then make sure I scrape this off so it doesn't dry onto it. Now, if you're watching this and you are a professional and you wanna give me some tips, put it in the comments below. Flatten these things out while I wait for the other things to cure. Now, I will be sanding these down. It's just the rough surfaces. I'd rather shave it down with this rather than using my sandpaper. All right, let's get sanding. Pro sand, extra large. 
Well, it's huge. Sweet! Look how flat that is. Yeah! Oh, so smooth. Let's see if I can sand this thing away. Yes. Okay. What's this? What's this? So I'm using Season Flex Exterior Paint with Primer Semi Gloss. Paint I need. Good. Get all the loose bristles away. Okay. Just like cleaning chopsticks. So from what I saw on the video, which is learning how to paint, was that you want to paint the edges first with a brush like that. And then edges on top. Obviously I'm going to be using my trusty step stool to go on top. So all the edges here, I go across so that the edges are good to go. Yeah, I don't know, I'm kind of nervous, but fuck. Why not, right? There we go. Ooh. Rollers, my stick. Should've got a telescopic one. Let's get painting. Oh, that is thick. Fuck, so I have to carry this around? All right, we'll start from the top. So now it's time for me to do the rollers, hoping for the best on my first coat here. I did all the edges, took a long time, but I'm not sure about the idea of doing like the, the midway pinstripe. I was overly ambitious, realizing doing this right now, it's just giving me less confidence, but we'll see how this goes. Here we go. Coats. Should have read this before. Allow two to four hours. Jesus. Well, I guess the first coat's done. It says allow two to four hours, which I didn't anticipate. I thought it would be like an hour. Wait, two to four hours. Shit. Fuck, painting takes a long time. I don't know. Anyways, we'll get back to this after two to four hours. 3.28 a.m. morning okay so we are on our third coat for this wall here and i'm not gonna lie it has been quite the challenge just i didn't expect this much work for this one fucking wall but my back's aching my knees are aching everything's aching and i know i'm just bitching but i gotta get the job done because i gotta start working on the wall behind me as well just as an update, I just had a professional look at my garage door and the issue is my spring is too old. It's over 10 years old, which is in time for need of a replacement. All of my rollers, which hasn't been maintained, are all shot. Therefore, those need to be replaced. And most importantly, the bearings and the pulley system are pretty much all gone. So everything needs to be replaced, including the braided line here. As you can see here, 
It has a little bit of fraying, which is quite dangerous. Although he did say installing the belt drive on my own was a job well done, he said, from a professional, which I might take that as a compliment. But regardless, I need to get all these fixed up so my garage is quiet, sound, as well as safe. So that's something that I wasn't really looking forward to in terms of uh, additional cost, but I gotta get the job done and I want this garage to be tip top shape when we're all done. Anyways, we'll continue on painting and hopefully you guys enjoy it. All right, so I just finished the third coat of the paint and I finally feel like I got some progress going on. The first two coats took a really long time for me to gain confidence because it didn't seem like it was actually covering anything up. And I think I realized the original paint, which is on the ceiling right now, is actually quite dark, even though it's like a tannish brown. And I realized that on the third coat of paint where I can actually start to feel like I made some progress, like a really decent one, as in like I don't see the lines or streaks or anything like that. So I know there's a lot of people out there probably criticizing my work and that's okay, I'm, I'm all for it. Only because I, I'm here to learn as much as some other viewers here are watching this so they can learn as well. Learning from me is probably a mistake in terms of doing housework, but if you can relate to me in a way that I grew up in a household where I wasn't really given the opportunity to do any of the housework and I'm learning through YouTube and as well showcasing my noob abilities on being able to do some of these things that should be relatively simple for anyone to do. But I'm taking the leap and showing my viewers here that it can be done. It just took a little bit of trial and error. And <laughs> there's a YouTuber that I watch for DIY instructions on how to paint and he did a very good instructional video. One of them was that you do not need painter's tape because obviously you should have good skills with, with your brush so you don't go over the line. Well, that wasn't the case for me because I didn't really set things up properly and I should probably practice, especially doing the line. So in hindsight, I should have used painter's tape, especially in the ceiling here. I don't know if you can see the lines. I mean, it probably looks pretty crisp from your point of view, but if I get closer, you're gonna see that some of the lines are not as crisp and I should have put painter's tape along the edges so that it is not bleeding through and then at the end I can just peel it off. It is a new thing to do, but you know what? It probably saves a lot of time and headache to paint the ceiling of this garage, which I'm not gonna do because it's, it's a lot of work and it's just a garage anyways. So I'm using this as a practice. My next one would be painting that wall there, which I'm gonna take everything and move it away from it. I'm gonna give myself a lot of clearance. As you can see on my third coat, I actually moved more stuff out. When I first started, like all these things were like up to the edge. I thought maybe giving myself a meter would be good enough, but it was not the case because of my stick handle and it got everything in the way and just really frustrated me. So that's the paint job of my one wall here and I'm gonna continue on with the back. I don't think I'm gonna film that as much as I did on this wall just because it was a big learning curve, but I'll probably do a time lapse on it. So hopefully you guys enjoying this uh, series for now. And on a positive note, I think things are coming along really well. I finished the, the layout of the gym. It's not 100% complete because I still need to paint that side and get the mirror. But on this end, I'm starting to get the idea of what it should look like. And I already purchased a tool chest that's gonna go right about there. This whole area would be my location for tools and things to work on for my motorcycles. But I'm pretty excited. I'm glad I got to start this. It's probably not gonna gain a lot of views, but that's not really the goal here. I'm just trying to get myself motivated to get this garage fitted up so I can work on my vehicles and as well, have have a functional gym. Thanks for watching. Ride safe, ride prepared, ride on. Peace.